everyone, welcome to Skein Spider. It is Friday yet again and this week's pattern is going to be some cat-shaped cactuses. Cat cactuses. Cat cactuses? Cat Grab your hooks and let's get started. <laughs> To make this pattern you're going to need a 3mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, a needle, pins, stuffing, three pairs of safety eyes, and yarn in brown, green, plus four other colours of your choice, and also a little bit of black embroidery thread. In part one of this pattern we're going to be making and assembling the pots. We're going to begin pot number one with six single crochet in a magic circle. Round two is six increases. For round three, we're going to do one single crochet. And then an increase in the next stitch. And we're going to repeat that pattern for the entire round. So continue doing one single crochet, one increase six times or all the way until the end. For round four, we're going to begin with one single crochet again. And then we're going to increase in the next stitch. And then we're going to repeat two single crochet, one increase five times. One, two, increase. Do that four more times. After you've done your final increase, so the fifth one, you should have one stitch left in your round. We're just going to single crochet into that. Round five is three single crochet, one increase repeated six times. At the end of round five, you should have 30 stitches in your round, and then round six is going to be worked entirely into the back loop. Now the back loop is going to be the back part of our stitches here. So if you think of each individual stitch, let me bring this up nice and close. If you think of each individual stitch as a V shape, the back loop is the part of the V that's furthest away from you right here. So that's the part we're going to be working into. So for round six we're just going to do 30 single crochet in the back loop only and you'll know that you're working in the back loop because you'll be able to see the line that is left or is created by the front loops. Round seven is also going to be 30 single crochet, except this time we're back to working in both loops. Round eight is 14 single crochet, followed by an increase repeated twice. At the end of round eight, there should be 32 stitches in your round, and then rounds nine and 10 are just going to be 32 single crochet. Round 11 is 15 single crochet and an increase repeated twice. Rounds 12 and 13 are going to be 34 single crochet. Mm -hmm. 
round 14 is 16 single crochet and an increase repeated twice. Rounds 15 and 16 are going to be 36 single crochet. Ooh. Before starting round 17, make sure to grab one of your other colors because we're going to need that this round. We're going to begin round 17 with five single crochet. And five. After these five single crochet, we're going to do a popcorn stitch. However, we're going to be doing it in our second color, whatever that may be for you. So you're going to take this color and you're going to line up the tail end behind the stitch we've just done, so our fifth single crochet. And then we're going to do a popcorn stitch with it in the next stitch. To do a popcorn stitch, all we're going to do is put five double crochet in the same stitch. So again, lining up that secondary color and then we're going to yarn over with that secondary color, go into the next stitch, yarn over again and pull through. This should leave us with three loops on our hook. So we have one in the original color and then two in the secondary color. You're going to yarn over again, pull through those first two loops and this will leave you with two loops on your hook and then to finish the double crochet, we're just going to yarn over and pull through both of those loops. We're going to repeat this four more times, so that's five double crochet in total. Once again, yarn over, go into the same stitch, yarn over and pull through. You'll have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through the first two, yarn over, pull through the two remaining loops. Also, what you can do is work over these tail ends just to secure them. If you don't work over them, you will have to go back later and weave them in. So we're up to double crochet number three. Then double crochet number four. And finally, double crochet number five. finish off our popcorn stitch what we're going to do is pull up with our hook so we leave a fairly large loop here and you want to be careful not to tug on this end and pull that loop closed so make sure we have a nice large loop then you're going to take your crochet hook and insert it into the first double crochet that we did so you can count backwards to make this a little bit easier this is stitch five here or double crochet five four three two and one so it's in the color of the or the original color that we used. Insert your hook into that from front to back like so. And then you're going to take this large loop that we left, place it on the head of the hook. And when it stays there, we're going to pull firmly on the yarn, the end of the yarn to tighten that loop up. Then you're just going to pull that stitch, sorry, that loop through the first stitch as if you were doing a slip stitch and to finish off the popcorn stitch we're just going to chain one and that's how you do a popcorn stitch we're going to repeat that pattern five single crochet in the original color one popcorn stitch in the secondary color for the entire round so our next set of five single crochet are going to be back in the original color now it can be a little bit tricky to see which stitch you need to work into next because the popcorn stitch is quite bulky so what you can do is just push that aside and then you'll be able to clearly see the stitch you need to work into for the second part of round 17. We're going to go into this stitch there we go and at this point drop your secondary color and we're going to bring in our original color and I'm just going to do one single crochet in that 
I'm also going to be working over this secondary color because I want to carry it with me so I can use it when I do the next popcorn stitch. So that was one single crochet, two, again I'm working over this secondary color, three, four, and five. Drop the original color, pick up the secondary color, and we're going to do another popcorn stitch in the next stitch. So five double crochet. And five. Pull up and leave a loop. Insert your hook into the first double crochet. Place the loop on the hook and then pull the yarn firmly. Take it through the first double crochet and then chain one. And you're just going to repeat that same pattern until the end of the round. Round 18 is going to be worked in our original color. I'm going to cut off the secondary color here, just leave a little bit of a tail so that you can work over it and just secure it. Now with round 18, we need to keep in mind that the chain one at the end of each popcorn stitch is going to count as a stitch in the round. So begin round 18 by doing five single crochet. And five. And you'll see after this fifth stitch, we come up against the popcorn stitch. So stitch number six in round 18 is going to be here, which is the chain one of the popcorn stitch. There we go, so number six. So as you're going around crocheting, just keep that in mind that you need to be working into those chain ones from each popcorn stitch. At the end of round 18 you should have 38 stitches in your round and round 19 is just going to be 38 single crochet. Round 19 is also going to be 38 single crochet except this time we're going to be working into the front loop only. Now if you remember from round 6, yes round 6 that the back loop was the part of the stitch that's furthest away from you. The front loop is the part of, the, well, the V of the stitch that's closest to you. So this one here, we're going to be working into that for the entirety of round 19. No, round 20. <laughs> Round 21 is going to be our final round and it too is just 38 single crochet except this time we're going to be changing colour back to our secondary colour or any other colour you want to use. We're just going to change colours and then do 38 single crochet all the way around. We're just going to slip stitch to finish off and cut a tail, not very long, just long enough so you can weave it in to secure it later on. And that is our first pot all finished. Pot number two also starts with six single crochet in a magic circle. And the color I'm using is actually the secondary color we used in the first pot. So I'm going to be crocheting the main body of this one in that color. Round two is six increases. Woo. Round three is going to be three single crochet 
followed by three increases and we're going to repeat that pattern twice. Round four is one single crochet followed by an increase and then we're going to repeat two single crochet, one increase five times. This should leave you with one stitch left in your round and we're just going to put one single crochet into that. At the end of round four you should have 24 stitches in your round and then round five is going to be worked entirely into the back loop. So we're just going to put 24 single crochet in the back loop only. Round six is just going to be 24 single crochet, this time we're working in both loops again. Round seven is three single crochet and an increase repeated six times. Rounds eight through to 10 are just 30 single crochet. Round 11 begins with two single crochet followed by an increase and then we're going to repeat four single crochet, one increase five times and finish off the round with two single crochet. Both rounds 13 and 14 are 36 single crochet. Round 15 is also 36 single crochet, except this time we're going to be working in the front loop only. At the end of round 15, I'm going to bring in my third color and I'm going to change to that for round 16. Now round 16 is going to be our final round. And what we're going to do is alternate between one single crochet, which I've already done, and a spike stitch. Now to do a spike stitch, we're going to work into the space between the two previous rounds rather than the V of the stitch itself. So if you look at the second stitch here, where we would usually work into if we were just doing a normal single crochet, and you're going to look and see which space lines up roughly beneath it. So I'm going to go with this one here. And instead of going into the stitch, I'm going to go into that space in between the rounds. Once you've gone through that space, you're going to yarn over and pull through as normal. And then you're going to pull your hook up so it's in line with the round we're crocheting now. So you don't want the stitch to be down here, you want to pull the yarn up a little bit. Once you've done that, yarn over and pull through to complete the stitch. And that's all we have to do to do a spike stitch. You're just going one round down instead of working into the stitch you normally would. Pretty simple. Though when you're crocheting this particular round, you want to be careful that you don't go through the exposed back loops from what was it round 15 because we're going to need those later on. So next stitch is a normal single crochet. Stitch after that is going to be a spike stitch so go down into the space between the rounds make sure you're not catching that back loop. Yarn over and pull through. Pull the yarn up so it's level with your stitches and then complete the stitch. Again, single crochet, 
spike stitch down in between the spaces, no back loop, yarn over, pull through, line the stitches up and finish off. So you're going to do that all the way around for the entirety of round 16, alternating between single crochet and spike stitch. When you're finished, we're just going to slip stitch and again, leave a short tail that you can weave in later on. And then we can go on to our third and final pot. I'll be crocheting pot number three in my third purple color. And I'm also going to begin it with six single crochet in a magic circle. Round two is six increases. Round three is one single crochet, one increase repeated six times. Round four is one single crochet and an increase followed by two single crochet, one increase repeated five times and then finish off the round with one single crochet. Round five is 24 single crochet and we're going to be working entirely into the back loop. Round seven is seven single crochet and an increase repeated three times. At the end of round seven, you should have 27 single crochet and round eight is just going to be 27 single crochet all the way around. Round nine is eight single crochet and an increase repeated three times. Round 10 is 30 single crochet. Round 11 is nine single crochet, one increase repeated three times. Round 12 is 33 single crochet. Round 13 is 10 single crochet and an increase repeated three times. Round 14 is 36 single crochet. From round 15, we're going to be creating the lip of the third pot. So we're going to be alternating between using both the front loop and the back loop fairly regularly. So just make sure that you are using the correct part of the stitch when we're crocheting so you get the right shape at the end. So for round 15, we're going to be working into the front loop and we're going to put 11 single crochet, one increase repeated three times in the front loop only.
For round 16, we're going to be working in both loops again, and you're going to put 12 single crochet, one increase repeated three times in both loops. Round 17 is worked in the back loop only, and we're going to do 42 single crochet entirely into the back loop. Both rounds 18 and 19 are 42 single crochet, and for both of those rounds, we're back to working into both loops again. Round 20 is worked in the back loops only, so we're going to do 12 single crochet, one decrease repeated three times, entirely into the back loops. For round 21, we'll be working in both loops again, and we're going to do 11 single crochet, one decrease repeated three times. After round 21, you should have 36 stitches in your round, and round 22 is going to be 36 single crochet worked into the back loop only. Round 24 is our final round and it's just going to be 36 single crochet. However, this is where we create the lip for our pot. So what we're going to do is instead of just working into the stitches of the previous round, we're also going to be working into the back loops from round 15. And I'll show you what I mean. So we're going to go into stitch number one and instead of yarning over and pulling through to complete the single crochet, we're first going to fold our work down a little bit until you can see these back loops from round 15. It should be all the way around your work. You're going to line up this first stitch that we've gone into with whichever stitch from, or back loop, sorry, whichever back loop from round 15 is directly below it and then so for me that is the last back loop from, from round 15 and then you're going to go into that back loop too. Once you've done that you're going to yarn over and pull through both the back loop and the first stitch. This will leave you with two loops on your hook. All you need to do now is yarn over and pull through to complete the first single crochet. And that is your first stitch of round 24. Then you're going to do the same thing for the second stitch. So go into the stitch, go into the next back loop you can see from round 15, and then single crochet. Again, into the stitch from the previous round, into the back loop from round 15, and single crochet. And you're just going to repeat this all the way around so it will end up creating a little lip for the side of your pot. Like we did with the other pots, we're just going to leave a little tail that we can weave in later. And then we're finished with our pots. The last thing we're going to be crocheting in this video is the dirt to go on the top of the pots. Now for each of the three pots, the pattern is the same from rounds one to six, except for round, no, <laughs> except for pot number one has an additional round because its final stitch count was 38 stitches rather than 36 like the other two. So we're going to do rounds one to six for each of the, the three pots. And then pot number one, which has an additional round, is what we're going to be doing now. So round one is six single crochet in a magic circle. 
Round two is six increases. Round three is one single crochet or one increase repeated six times. Round four is one single crochet and an increase and then repeat two single crochet, one increase five times and finish off your round with one single crochet. Round five is three single crochet and an increase repeated six times. Round six is two single crochet and an increase followed by a repeat of four single crochet, one increase repeated five times, and then just finish off with two single crochet. For pots one and two, you're going to stop here. So cut a long tail for sewing and set those aside. But for, but for pot number one, we're going to do one more round. And that round, which will be round seven, is 17 single crochet and an increase repeated twice. Woo. When you're done, just slip stitch to finish off. Cut a tail and now we can start assembling our pots. Step one of assembly is to grab your needle and all we're going to do is weave in any loose ends. So thread the tail ends through your needle and we're just going to weave the end in through the back of the stitches to hide it. Next we're going to attach the dirt to our pot. So we're going to do the same thing, take the tail end of the dirt and thread that through our needle. And then what we're going to do is just fold back the top of the pot a little bit until we have easy access to the exposed back loops from round 20. At least I think it was round 20. <laughs> this, these back loops is where we're going to sew the dirt to. So you're going to go into the exposed back loop. And then back into the stitches of the dirt and just repeat that the entire way around. So into there, Woo. once you've completed about three quarters of the sewing, we're going to stop and add our stuffing. To get the bottom as flat as possible, what you want to do is press it firmly against a flat surface while you're stuffing it. So as you push this in, make sure it's sitting nice and flat against something. And then when all your stuffing's in, we're just going to finish off our sewing. When all the sewing's complete, just weave in your end to secure it. Snip off any excess. And then we can fold the top back up. You're going to do the same thing for pots two and three. Sew on the dirt for about three quarters of the way, add the stuffing and then finish sewing. 
Thank you for watching. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and I'll be back next week with part two.